Hello everyone. Today I wanted to show you the iCode 4 port retro adapter for Atari 2600, 7800, or the 8 bit computers. Specifically, I wanted to show you how to configure it to work with driving paddles, um, I'm sorry, driving controllers um, using Stella. Now I've got it to work with the Windows version of Stella. I'm sure it's going to work with the RetroPie, but I haven't tried that yet. I know the other games work fine with uh, RetroPie, but this is the first time I modified it so that this can work properly with the driving controllers. If you're not familiar with what the driving controllers are, you know, you've got your Atari paddles here, which are used for games like Breakout and Kaboom and sorts, but, uh, you know, they're limited. They only go to a certain spot and they stop spinning and then you go the other direction and it stops spinning. But certain games Atari has uh, uses these special controllers that look just like paddles but they have this driving on them so they're called driving controllers. And the difference is is that they spin all the way around continuously. Instead of a potentiometer in here it's got a 2-bit encoder and it can send the data uh, if it's moving left or right, and uh, it can, the device can detect that and treat it accordingly. So let me show you how this works. First step is this is a USB uh, port, so the USB port goes here on the side. That's where we're going to connect it. Um, these are the four different ports. They're numbered one, two, three, four. You can see number one, two, three, and four. Um, and then there's some buttons here that can. Uh, act as additional buttons like start, select, um, and so on. You can map them to additional buttons on the joystick. Um, I've got a joystick over here, uh, Atari joystick. Currently that's connected to port 1. So I'm going to push pause here and connect uh, this USB drive because uh, so hang on here. Alright, as soon as I connected it, uh, you know the little red light came on over here that you can you know, slightly see and then um, now if I press some of these buttons, you'll notice that uh, they react to uh, the different uh, uh, buttons on the screen. But first I'm going to move my uh, joystick here that I've got my hand on. And notice as, as I move the joystick, it shows me um, how my positions are. So this is port 1. As I press the fire button, the fire button works. The second one below it, uh, if you've got a two button joystick, on a 7800. Uh, you can map ports 3 and 4 um, to work with that as well and I'll show you that in a second. But um, and then you know you've got these additional buttons here on the top which you're going to be mapping to uh, the first two here are buttons 1 and 2 so it's just like pressing fire that's what this is and then these are the additional buttons uh, are buttons 3, 4, 5 and 6 uh, that will show up here in gamepad. So let me show you that on quickly on the uh, on the screen here. So when you first connect the device, you know I'm running. Uh, this is my Stella folder. But before we do that, I'm going to go to my control panel, and under control panel, um, I'm going to go to my hardware and view my hardware and devices. You'll notice that as soon as I plugged it in, it uh, rec recognized that I've got a retro joystick adapter plugged in. So I'm going to right click and go to the controller settings and uh, as soon as I do that it pops up this little window and notice I've got four different controllers because I've got four ports on this device so each of these are these controllers. I'm going to go ahead and select the first one and bring that over and here's you know your standard joystick. As I move the joystick around just like you saw on this little screen device moving around and the buttons uh, firing as I press the fire button here uh, the fire button blinks same thing on the screen here you know that's the fire button I'm clicking and as I move around that's testing my joystick so the device is functioning and then if I press the buttons on the device you know these additional buttons notice that there's additional buttons here so I've got buttons uh, you know four three, four, five, six, that's the, uh, they correspond to these and I can map those in Stella to start, select, uh, and so forth. 
Okay, so that's uh, quickly the joystick. But now let me show you um, how this reacts with paddles and specifically the driving controller because we need that for our um, Indy 500 game, which is uh, really, really fun to play. And I had to make the modifications to make it work. So let me show you um, how that works. So I'm going to go ahead and um, disconnect my joystick because I don't need that anymore. But first, let me just quickly show you uh, paddles. So I'm going to go ahead and connect the um, paddles in here to port one. Now paddles uh, typically have two paddles on a single port. So if you've got uh, four paddles on you, you can connect two paddles on port one, two paddles on port two. But when you do that, uh, right now I've only got two connected here. Um, I'm going to push all these four buttons at the same time. That'll reset the device and it'll detect that I've got paddles connected. And notice now the screen has uh, a little bit uh, different display. And uh, these are now my two paddles here. Uh, not the driving controls, but the paddles. And the paddles, as I move them around, notice that uh, I've got a um, spinning thing here. That's paddle one. This is paddle two. And of course the fire buttons on the paddles each of the devices, and then I've got additional buttons on the device that uh, map to you know some of these other uh, buttons three and four um, on the paddles. Okay, so um, same thing if you look at now what happens on the um, joystick one that I had on the screen, the paddles control the axis. So the first paddle is controlling the right axis, uh, the X axis. And the other paddle, the second paddle, um, um, controls the y-axis. And then the fire buttons are mapped to fire button 2, which is the second one, and fire button 1. Okay? Um, I'm sorry, the, yeah, so that's correct. x-axis is number 1, and y-axis is number 2. So uh, they work really nicely. So then... Uh, we want to see how the um, um, controllers work, the driving controller. So I'm going to unplug this one here and I'm going to go ahead and uh, find my driving controller which is uh, uh, this piece here. This is my driving controller and this is the cable. So I'm going to plug this part in into port 1 as well. Okay, it's plugged in. I'm going to go ahead and reset these four buttons once more. Now it's going to see it as a joystick initially so uh, no different than a joystick and uh, depending on the rev version that you have of this device this is rev 4.0 the third generation ones uh, they will also work but uh, they're, 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 you're not going to see any screen display difference you're going to see a uh, joystick but when I move my driving controller Notice that it acts like going up and for some reason you also see that blinking button in some other positions. But there's basically four positions. Position uh, 1, position 2, position 3, position 4. So there are four positions uh, and they continuously go in a circle, right? So, you know, that's when you think about a 2-bit uh, controller. There are two wires that are connected from this driving controller into this port and it's sending you know binary values two bits gives you four possible values and that's what these are four possible positions now of course on the screen you'll notice that same thing you know it's position one position two position three uh, button three is being pressed now Stella emulator is smart enough to understand that if you are moving only up and down and you've got these four positions that it's a driving controller um, and that's how it works but uh, so I'll go into Stella in a minute and show you Indy 500 but before I do that let me show you what version 4 of this device does so because I've loaded the version 4 firmware um, you can change modes by pressing these two outside buttons and I'm going to go to uh, different modes port 3 which means all these uh, extra buttons are going to get sent to joystick 3. I'm going to push it again. Now it's going to send to port 4. I'm going to push it again. 
This is the 7800 joystick mode. You'll notice that only the right ports 3 and 4 have two butts and joysticks. That's where 7800 joystick goes. But then right after the 7800 more, if I press to the next mode, it went to driving controller mode. And now instead of a half circle, you've got a full circle. And as I move the uh, spin the controller, you'll notice that it's spinning all the way around. Um, and it's, you know, because this has uh, got a 16 position switch inside, um, there's actually, you know, many positions all the way around the circle, you know, that's, and it's quite sensitive. As I move just, you know, slightly, it's going to go through each of the positions, and of course, my fire button goes the same way. Now, what does it look like on, this, on the uh, device? You know, Windows is not smart enough to notice it that it's driving controller, but you'll notice that a little blinking uh, button has gone away, and the system is smarter now and knows there are four positions, position one, uh, position two, three, and four, right? So that's, uh, you know, the granularity of, uh, um, actually it's five position. Um, it's a middle position, and then there's two on the top, and then two on the bottom. And the resolution is five. So when I look at the device, the device even is, is smart enough to be able to uh, increase the resolution and reduce the resolution. So if I push these two buttons, it means it's increasing. Notice it went to resolution 7, 9, 11. So I can increase that resolution. And I can also decrease the resolution by pushing these, uh, the white button and the green button. And that'll bring it down. So just to show you, I'm going to go to um, all the way down here to resolution 3 instead of 5. So now if I look at the screen and I move the driving controller, notice there's only three positions. It's you know, basically down, up, and the middle. Um, and this is, makes the, 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 the um, driving controller even more sensitive. I personally like it in three mode, but even in five, it works really well. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase to five. And actually, I'm gonna increase to nine just to show you. Here's resolution nine. So now the controller has nine positions on the x-axis. So it's granular, uh, less, sensitive, well, you can think of it as more resolution, but when it comes to Indy 500, uh, it'll have lower sensitivity. You know, if you move uh, the circle a little bit, um, it won't move that much. If you move it more and more, it moves more. So I'm gonna um, reduce it uh, down to uh, the setting I like, which is, um, I think, resolution three, which is the most sensitive. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start um, Indy 500. Uh, I'm going to go into my Stella emulator that I've got here. I'm using um, Stella 64-bit version on Stella 6.4, but it works fine with um, the 32-bit version or you know a little bit earlier versions as well. So I'm going to go ahead and double click. Okay, so we've got uh, you know, your standard Stella interface. Here's uh, my Indy 500. Now, because this is running on Windows, Windows doesn't uh, is seeing these gamepad devices as as regular gamepads. Um, Stella is not smart enough to pick it up, but it is smart enough to recognize the resolution of the um, driving controller and all that. But the way you have to make it work is you have to go to the options and make sure you go to the game properties. This is specific to Indy 500 game properties. And then you'll notice under controllers, um, you know, make sure you set this, this instead of driving, make sure you set it to joystick. Even though you set it to joystick, it's smart enough to know that Windows is joystick, but it's recognizing um, the changes I just showed you, which are the positions of the controller. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to go ahead and close. And I'm going to go ahead and start in the 500. Here we are. Now, what's cool is I've mapped uh, uh, in Stella uh, these buttons on the device. Um, again, I've mapped uh, this blue and green button, in my case, to uh, selecting of the game. Like here's going to, you know, two player, one player. And the, as I press the buttons, the selection, you know, moves. So it's nice, I don't have to 
uh, use the keyboard. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead back, go back to game uh, number two because that's one player. It works fine with two players as well. So here's uh, game two, which is one player. And then I'm going to press the other button to start. So here the game started. Now I'm going to go ahead and press fire button, you know, and the fire button sure works. And then as I spin around, um, you know, my uh, car is moving. I'm using a camera, so it's going to be hard for me to drive and show you this at the same time. Let me see if I can do it one-handed. Here we go. My skills with a single-handed uh, game, not too well. But uh, me and a friend were having fun last night, racing really fast, uh, especially the ice track one. Uh, we love the ice track one, but uh, these controllers work great. So um, if you want to learn more about these controllers, just go to www.ico.com. Uh, you can get them there. There it shows you how to build some of these similar ones, maybe not the driving controller ones, but it shows you the inner workings of how these work. There's blog articles there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Again, www.ico.com. I hope this helps.